to get through today, so I'm going to get started right away here. Um, if we get into chapter 11 at all today, that would be a, a small miracle, and, I'll, and I'd be happy with that. If we don't, I'm okay with that as well. Um, remember, tomorrow we don't have a study session. Yesterday, we left off discussing uh, congressional reconstruction a little bit. Um, we talked about uh, how in December of 1865, we had this reconstruction stuff kind of starting up uh, after we have um, southern, delegates, su southern delegates coming back into D.C. We've got Republicans who are outraged. We have the passage of the 14th Amendment by 1868. We've also got Andrew Johnson coming in here. He becomes Sir Vito, of course. The Blacks are uh, allowed to vote, and the 15th Amendment makes um, voting for blacks permanent in 1870. Remember, those uh, 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments are oftentimes known as the Reconstruction Amendments because they take place around the Civil War, towards the end of the Civil War. How are things going to be shaped differently moving forward here? We kind of look at. We also have. Um, Third thing here, because there were um, only force on them, an outcome of the, the military reconstruction were the white redeemers. Who kind of took over at the end of reconstruction after the, the, the North had left. Um, and again, it kind of demonstrates the fact that you can't really impose or change somebody's views just by force, right? And so this is what happens in the South. We've got uh, the KKK that uh, comes to prominence here. Um, we also have, oh, I checked, KKK. They, uh, they, of course, are intimidating. Um, there's also the, the white... Amelia. Can I spell this right? Which is another group. So, um, there's the Forest Act of of 1871, and <clears throat> it aims at stopping the KKK. But by the time it gets passed, there's already a lot of damage that's done by these white redeemers. Mm -hmm. Was this during the military construction where they had many of those states in mind? Uh, If my memory serves me correctly, the, the whole admission as a state had to do with the loyalty oath and how states were allowed back in is that there was the agreements with like agreeing to the 13th Amendment, right? Um, 
the Fourteenth Amendment. Oh, by the time by the time the end of Reconstruction, they were all states again. Yes. But they were still military presence. Yeah, they were still a military presence. Yeah, to kind of carry out these laws, but that had kind of lost its muster. All right, 1877. It's uh, 12 years after the war. It's time to time to move out. Time to move on. Okay. All right. Let's talk about the realities of Reconstruction. Nice. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Realities of Reconstruction. Let's talk about the benefits here of Reconstruction. Um, obviously, the benefits included, we've got um, <clears throat> blacks in the south and north can now vote. Uh, there was the Union League that helped to organize blacks. We had new southern constitutions written. We also have uh, blacks being, being allowed to vote with the 15th Amendment, making it permanent in 1870. So the 15th Amendment, blacks can vote. Of course, it was in 1870. Whoa, never mind. That's my number two for the other one before. I already said that, didn't I? Does that sound familiar? Well, I guess it's a benefit still, right? You can keep it down there. Another one would be uh, black participation in Congress. We've got uh, 14 black congressmen and two black senators during Reconstruction. And, of course, part of this has to do with Republicans having, heavily having a heavy involvement in the South during this time. The, the white redeemers still weren't... Uh, in full swing. John? In the South? Uh, I don't know. My guess is uh, probably... Doesn't the textbook talk about that? Does our textbook talk about... Like how many people were former slaves that were in Congress? I don't know. They could be, yeah. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, 14 were in Congress, 2 in the Senate. Yeah, I think that's, that's a good point, John, when you talked about with if they were educated or not. Because um, if they weren't, you're right, they could be taken advantage of it. And a lot of people mm -hmm. thought that the Republicans tried to keep them in, uh, keep them or come have a heavy presence in the South and keep blacks in the South so that way they could take over those states when it came to, to elections. Come on, question. Wait, you said 14. There's four, yeah, so 14 uh, congressmen, meaning 14 people in the House, and two in the Senate. So, yeah, I guess 14 congressmen being House of Representatives, yep, and then two in the Senate. All right. There's also an improved Southern infrastructure as a result of the war. There's uh, schools, public works, property rights for women. Another uh, reality were the uh, carpetbaggers. who were, of course, northerners who came down to the, to the south to work. They take advantage of the economic benefits of being in the south. 
Another reality were the scalawags here, the uh, scallywags. These are people who uh, were southern whites who were in favor of Reconstruction, and of course both of those had both of these groups had a very negative connotation, context. Yeah, that's right. He just got All right. Let's talk about the impeachment of Andrew Johnson here. Everybody, anybody have any questions on those? Sorry. Right. Okay. Impeachment of Andrew Johnson here. Um, Johnson, of course, uh, was the president who took over after Lincoln. Um, in 1868, the Congress passes a law that they know he will have to disobey. All right, so this is 1868 when the law passes. And of course, that was the Tenure of Office Act. Um, Tenure of Office Act dealt with uh, Senate needing approval before any presidential firings. So remember, he is, uh, I, I believe, they're, they're close to veto proof here. Um, they get it. They get it by him, and of course Johnson is impeached because even though the law is in place, he fires uh, Secretary of War Stanton after the fact. I can't remember what the. Uh, oh, here we go. Um, I do remember. I burned down. Stanton was uh, accused of spying with the radical Republican for the radical Republicans into the office. He was kind of the he would communicate what was going on during cabinet meetings. And so, um, yeah. Uh, no. Um, in fact, he uh, he was almost impeached as a result of this. But luckily, the Senate did not impeach him by one vote. They, they fell short. There are three things that you have to know about why they didn't impeach him. Uh, number one, it, his replacement would be a bad situation there. We don't know who is going to take over. Number two, um, it could hurt the country. And by doing it, uh, number three, uh, Johnson said he would stop vetoing. So those are the three reasons as to why. They said that they wouldn't, uh, they, they decided not to impeach him. The biggest reason as to why it's important that Johnson was not impeached and not, excuse me, he was impeached, but why he wasn't kicked out of office and convicted is that had this happened, we could see a situation in any political future from that point going forward that if the, the House or the Senate had a supermajority and they could override things that the President was doing, <coughs> excuse me, and they didn't like the President because he was of a p different political party, they could essentially find this some kind of way to kick him out of office. All right? And then it becomes a very strong legislative branch, too strong, and the executive and the judicial end up becoming weak and, and ineffective in our checks and balances system. All right, let's talk about the overall assessment here of uh, Reconstruction. Could they have done that? Yeah, they could have. I think it, I'm sure you could have fought it. There would have been a big legal battle, right? 
But actually, I'm trying to think. I think the Supreme Court oversees the, if I remember the impeachment process. I think that the trial is held in the Senate, but I thought the Supreme Court has some. AT, question? Okay. And I think if I, I think your book talks about the textbook talks about that too, that they're not straight off of the, the, the plantation and Hey, let's uh, take this guy who just was freed last week and let's make him a senator. I mean, it's, they have some type of political influence. Right now, right? Okay, we move on here to uh, overall assessment. A um, <clears throat> couple of different theories here um, about Reconstruction. Most of them not good for Reconstruction. Uh, there's uh, the analysis here that. Um, it failed. And the theory is um, basically the North cared about helping the Republican Party and freeing slaves quickly. And so that was, that caused issues with, um, with the productivity of, of Reconstruction. Too dramatic of a change possibly. Some people see that it failed. This is another theory here. Um, some people say that it failed because um, Northerners stopped caring. Um, Depression in um, 1873, people weren't worried about making the, the South pay for their past sins of eight years ago. Uh, they're looking at, hey, you know what, we need, we need some food here, We're, we need a job, we need money. And so it wasn't the hot button issue anymore. Other people feel that it failed. Because it broke values that were held in America. So, for example, the belief in personal property, uh, the belief in self government. And the belief in state control all conflict with the ideas behind Reconstruction. Other opinions that are out there regarding Reconstruction? Um, some people feel that the North wronged the South through Reconstruction. Just as bad as the Civil War, right? On the other hand, some people feel that it was a noble attempt to give equal rights to slaves. After all, blacks did receive an unprecedented, unprecedented amount of um, equality, or excuse me, freedoms initially. I didn't say equality, I didn't realize what that is, but freedoms initially, they, they did, there, there was the benefit of that, all right? And of course, Reconstruction ends with the uh, Hayes-Tilden corrupt election of 1876. 
the Hayes Tilden. H A Y E S Tilden T I L D E N. The Hayes Tilden corrupt, corrupt election of 1876. There's some dirty pool being played here. Um, Hayes ends up winning the election, um, but agrees to pull out troops as a result of it so that there wouldn't be much of a fight. There's some contested electoral ballot that it came down to, and who was going to hear the case? And so Hayes wins, Tilden goes away, but gets what the South wants in return, which is to get the North out of, out of the reconstruction business. All right, we good here? How's everybody feeling? You guys read your fast track to five, chapter nine? You all good with that? Feeling pretty swag, I know. Feeling pretty swag? Okay. Good. Can I erase this, folks? We're gonna move on to chapter ten here. I think we'll be able to get it done too. It's awesome. Chapter 10, chapter 10, chapter 10. <laughs> chapter 10 is about the industrial era. Make sure you're taking notes too that you have the chapter written nice and big so that way I can see what chapter you're doing for each section of notes. It shouldn't just be one continuous pile of bullet points. It should be kind of following the same format that I'm doing. If you haven't done it so far, start doing it now because you're about half into the book. Sounds like a good idea. Yep. Um, you need to have the chapters identified as separate here. Oh. So please take care of that. You need to go back through, talk to somebody else. Please do so. All right. Uh, start off here talking about industrial growth in America. So this will take us post-war. Actually, this, this, this will talk about. Um, oh, hold on a second. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Wait, I gotta end my video here first. Uh -oh.